Welcome Spartans to Mission Debrief. We've played every mission of the mainline Halo video games and now we're playing every mission from the rest of the games in the franchise in chronological order. Each episode we'll be discussing our experiences and sprinkling in a little lore along the way. If you'd like to play along and have your thoughts spread on the show, email us at podcastevolved at gmail.com or drop us a tweet at Podcast Evolved on Twitter. We'll be playing the What Could Go Wrong mission from the Awakening the Nightmare DLC in Halo Wars 2 on the next episode. If you like what you hear and want to support the show, visit Podcast Evolved on Patreon. You can also receive a free audiobook trial by visiting audibletrial.com slash podcast evolved. This episode, we're debriefing the Not On My Watch mission from Operation Spearbreaker in Halo Wars 2. I'm your host, Colin Perkins, alongside David Arnold, Hello, everybody. And Krista Brown. Little known fact. Lekgolo tastes like chicken. Mm. Slimy Yum. chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Would you use barbecue sauce or ranch? Oh, definitely. I mean, you just you just bread them and they look like cheeky tenders, right? <laughs> <laughs> Last mission was Gate Crashers. A month passed with no word back from Professor Anders' or Earth. During that time, the Banished were making moves, but it was unclear exactly what they were up to. The Spirit of Fire detected some nefarious activity on the surface and deployed Boomerang Company, an elite force of ODSTs, to investigate. After teaming up with India Company, Major Vaughn directed the UNSC to fight through both Banished and swarms of Sentinels to shut down the cloaking fields that were shrouding the truth. The Banished were attempting to capture a Forerunner ship. Now a night up not on my watch, upon reaching the ship's location, Boomerang, Boomerang Company discovers that the Banished plans are more diabolical than originally thought. The Forerunner ship is going to be used to cut the Spirit of Fire in half, and the Lagolo leader, Colony, is minutes away from launching the attack. Major Vaughn quickly gathers UNSC troops to sabotage the Banished plans of revenge. Date of the game is still May 1st, 2559. Here we go. Last of the two missions from our DLC, and I think we've talked through it, but this is the season pass. Um, this was included in the season pass as well as the leaders um, that are, you know, more available in the, the multiplayer and all that sort of fun stuff. We don't get an intro... Uh, another like intro cutscene or anything, but we do get mission dialogue, so that's good <laughs> uh, this time around. David, do you want to just take us through that mission dialogue real quick? Mission El Dialogo. Um, mission Briefing Vaughn. When Isabel and Jerome destroyed your conviction, the Banished became as stranded as we were, and now they've found a way to break the stalemate. Queen comes in. They're using engineers to hack into Ark's local systems and prep for a ship, uh, prep the ship for launch. If we Find those systems. Can you stop the engineers, Quinn? Spirit of Fire scans show that the terminals near the ship itself. I've got a, I got a decryption package. I'll do what I can. Bonds is okay. That'll be our backup plan. We'll try a Condor assault first. Hell yeah, you will. Yeah, but we find out a little bit. It didn't go so well. No, of course not, because it's con <laughs> Condors are related to Pelicans, and we know what happens. Exactly. The mission summary is stop the Forerunner ship from launching. And the scouting report, Pelican transport, transports can be used to quickly move your army around the battlefield. And that makes sense, because I didn't do it, because <laughs> there's sp these things that we got to do, our objectives here are spread all across the map. And I just walked my guys around. I should So totally did I, actually. <laughs> it's one of those uh, leader powers you have to unlock, but you're just like, why would I spend my points on that? I want to get more bo boomy stuff. More exploding things. <laughs> we gotta get those grizzlies. 
Yeah. Objectives. Disable charging columns, and there are four of them scattered around, uh, around the map. They're really just kind of the corners, more or less. Then also clear launch area of the Banish once you do that. Um, and then activate the terminal. That's just a quick little one. And then you kill the kill the hunter captain, which is, that's colony. What? Objective, the final objective is prevent the Forerunner ship from launching. And you don't really do anything for that. You just, after you kill colony, that, that last thing happens. Uh, the optional objective, finish the mission without losing any Colossus units. Destroy banished Forerunner ship supplies and disable controller sentinel shields. Those things are a pain in the ass. Um, the Forerunner ship supplies is a weird one too because they're they must be in the center of the map and they just all of a sudden I just got that objective. I didn't seek out that <laughs> objective. It just kind of happened. Um, bonus objectives are destroy enemy units and buildings with the Colossus Stomp which you have to do 15 of those, either units or buildings. Kill 10 Goliaths, and then also kill the cat, the hunter captain in under three minutes. Krista, did you do, th do that? Did you, did you no, get it under three minutes? I, it no, I didn't. It was very, very close, actually. Mm. Um, I also was playing on Legendary because I'm a crazy person. You are a crazy person, but <laughs> that's my fault. But you have agreed under my terms to play on Oh, you played it on legendary. That's right. Yeah, I did. I won. I won up. I, you know, I step up to the plate, Colin. I'm here to go above <laughs> and beyond for you. What? So why? Why did you do that? Why did you make this decision? Uh, I wanted the achievement. Oh, is it just for this mission or? No, I the... went back and played the orig the first mission on legendary too. Oh, so beat them both on legendary is the achievement. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. Work. Yeah, just to do the DLC on legendary. Gotcha. Part time is 45 minutes. Scoring goals: gold is 160,000, silver is 80 to 159, bronze is 50 to 79. There are no skulls, but there are two phoenix logs, and we'll talk about those later. Krista, why don't you go over the our, our brief version of the the toy box? Super brief toy box. All right. So our UNSC units: we have our hero unit, which is Boomerang Company, which is our a bunch of ODSTs. There's like five of them. Mm -hmm. Sunray 1-1. One, one. And then we have the biggest useless thing I've ever seen in my life, which is the Colossus, <laughs> and it doesn't seem to actually want to shoot anything, and it also doesn't want to stomp uh, on like anything it? when you tell it to stomp on it, so it's great. Sometimes it's a, it doesn't. It's a clunky all yoke. It's, it's so a what? Dumb. Clunky. Yeah, it's a little clunky. But now we have three mechs. It's weird, right? We have... Yes the cyclops we have the mantis and then we also have this giant colossus thing <laughs> you can Seems you can have the it. robot army you've always imagined colin right that's true and then you could also have um johnson's the leader power johnson the leader <laughs> unit and he's like really in this little mech one. suit yeah <laughs> yeah that'd be amazing spirit of fire abilities what do you got i have restoration drones one two and three scatter bomb one and two Bunker drop one and two. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about that last episode. It drops a big garrisonable structure. Remote sen sensors, which increases the lines of sight for buildings and capture points. Uh, ODST drop. Pelican transport one and two, which is none of us used. <laughs> right. Which probably would have been helpful. I used it a bit. I used it a bit. Oh, just okay. a bit. Well, just a once. bit. Once. Yeah, you once. you are a pelican transport guy, aren't you? I I, th I did it once. It's it's. Did funny. it crash? No, no, these that can't be cannon. Then. They're That's not, not cannon, cannon, but like, it's fun. <laughs> uh, we also have Mech Overcharge 1 and 2, which makes Mantises temporarily invulnerable and faster. And then we have the Grizzly Battalion, and it drops mm -hmm. three Grizzlies. Woo I finally it used it this time. It this time. Yeah, yeah, it's I did. fantastic. But I I forgot about it until the va like the the colony fight. That's a good time <laughs> so to like, put it though. Yeah. I had a uh, 120 units. Well, we'll talk about it when it comes up. But I did use it at the end. Um, what else you got? We got some banished. Uh, we got a new hero unit, which is the colony, and mm -hmm. he's a big let go low boy, and mm -hmm. he's just angry. And then we also have his friends, which are the Goliaths, which are also big let go low boys, and they just mm -hmm. melee, so they're pretty dumb. Um, we also have the controller sentinel, 
which has front shields. Very fun. And back shields. And back. So this one has both. back shields. Yeah, its back is covered. No one's touching that booty. Um, <laughs> Until you take out those, what are they called, power nodes or something? Yeah, you're basically just pantsing the sentinel at that point. <laughs> And then we have the aggressor sentinels, which are like the ones you see in the original trilogy of Halo that just mm -hmm. shoot lasers at you, basically. And they kind of fly around and do cute things. And that's yeah. about it. That's everything they're, new. They're there to be annoying. Basically. Yeah. Well, and we have mantises in here, too. I guess I didn't list that. But um, for the most part, the new stuff in this mission is Colossus and Colony. Two new things to play with. All right, so we do get a little bit of an intro. Um, we have Sunray 1-1 again, and they're they're reaching the site this of this Forerunner ship. And the Forerunner ship itself, it shows it to you right away, but it's it's a weird thing. Krista, what did you think of this? It's like this hole, and then it's like the, the little tip <laughs> is poking out <laughs> of this hole. It, I didn't like it. Weird. It oh, looks sorry. a little bit like a lich, like just a tiny bit. It's kind of it? shaped like that. It looks weird. It looks really weird. It's got like a little tail. I don't know. But you have no idea how big it is. No, it's just you like don't. The... It's like yeah. it looks like they just scaled up one of those huge um, or one of the kind of aggressor sentinels. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks a little weird, but it's, it's no, there's no way to tell what it actually looks like because you just get the top of it and it's just kind of floating in this little hole, <laughs> and it's being. It looks like it's being. Well, I guess it's being kind of powered by those four um those four beams that are around it those, those are the things you gotta shut down the charging stations as they call it but it is interesting you do see so they mentioned in the mission briefing that hey this our condor is gonna go over there and check it out and you see the condor go and the condor gets wrecked <laughs> right away um the condor goes down and so Sunray has got to go in and um, they do a little, they, there's a little more dialogue here too at the beginning, which is interesting because they figure out that they're going to, they're, the original thought is like, oh, the banished are going to get a forerunner ship and then they're going to get off of the Ark and go get reinforcements. But no, they're actually going to use that ship and, it, and they say it's like, oh, the, the coordinates are like pointing directly at the Spirit of Fire. So they're just going to use this thing to ram the Spirit of Fire in half and destroy it which is very banished i feel like or it's very brute um whether or not it's banished i guess is still up in the air but they're just they're just going to use that as a ram well, <laughs> they're probably still atrox i imagine is still very angry over the loss of enduring conviction yes yeah he's gonna try to even even the scales um but then yeah i guess if the spirit of fire is taken out of the sky you know there'll be some survivors but That'd be pretty much the end of the UNSC because they have, they have they don't have as many forces as the banished down on the on the surface and they'd be wiped. Yeah, so this is a big deal. Overlaying. This is a big deal for for a boomerang company to get down there. So it is interesting, I guess, knowing how how dire this potential plan is um, that we don't get any Spartans. You know, Jerome and Alice, they're just doing other things. <laughs> They've they got better be shit to do. <laughs> yeah. I guess. Maybe there's another, you know, something else going on on the arc that we don't know about. But, um, so, they, so it's an interesting setup, I think. And I forgot completely that, that that was the main crux of the plot, is that they were going to use it to... I thought they were just originally had some ship that they were going to get off of the arc, but no, they're, they're going to, you know, punch a hole in the Spirit of Fire, which is a big deal. So um, you start off, you kind of learn all that information, you run up on the map a little bit, and then they do give you a choice, which is interesting. They say you can either go this away or that away to plant your initial, um, your initial base, your fire base. Kristen, did you? What do you think about that? That I don't know. I don't. Choice. Does it really make that much of a difference whether you put your base to the left or to the right of where you spawn? I don't it's know. It's weird that they give you a choice, though. Yeah, it is. I have to say, I like I planted mine on the left space, which turned out to be good because there was another base uh, plot not too far away from it, more to the mm -hmm. left. So, 
I thought that was good because you can have these two bases really close to each other starting out. I did, once I established my initial base, I went over to the spot where they said you could put down your base, the other spot, and you can't put mm -hmm. down a base there then. I'm like, damn yeah. it, I want to. I know, I was thinking about that too. Yeah, they, they did take that away. So the I guess before you do get your base, you, you run Sunray Company up there, and there's a little garrison spot for you to hang out in and shoot this, um, what did I call it before? charging station yeah charging station so that's there's four of those things around the map that you have to disable so you shoot that and then this little orb blue orb thingy goes down but then you're not done so then now you have to go find a base and call down the colossus which we've already kind of talked about um david tell me more about the colossus like your thoughts on this thing is it do you like it no i mean i, I don't like I've, I've never been into like mechs really like you know the, the gundam thing i know it's very popular and this just looked uh -huh. really japanese -y to me i, I know it's probably that's yeah. probably a terrible thing to say but i just don't like that aesthetic and i don't like how the mantis looks i never did and the yeah, cyclops, is, the cyclops is okay but like as you scale up i just don't like it and this looks like just a larger mantis and it plays a little bit worse let's say um so I, I wasn't i'm not a huge fan of it pretty much i mean it's it's big it, it does a thing it has a stompy stomp but i, I don't know <laughs> yeah the old stompy stomp it, it but it, that is weird that that's one of its powers because it does have some powerful guns but then the stomp it gives you the stomp as the power i don't know krista any any other critiques of this thing uh, it's really clunky, and it looks like it should be super dope and powerful, and it mm -hmm. really isn't. And it takes up some... Doesn't it take up population as well? Yeah, it takes up a little population. On Halopedia, it says it's an exosuit. So there's a dude in there. What? Yeah, I would have thought as much. There's a dude. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, like, I mean... I know that we've had one or two, let's say, extended lore uh, things that have had um, like mechs in them and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. I don't think the UNSC as a whole, they, it doesn't seem like that's their design. Like that's the way they go down. They don't design mechs as much like their vehicles tend to be way more traditional, let's say. I mean, even when they do like experimental stuff, the craziest things they kind of do are like a smaller scale on like let's say, the armor and stuff like that and on... on on like individuals which i kind of like i like that it's like soldier level scale stuff they're doing as opposed to like big ass fucking mechs um i guess big spaceships makes more sense given the scale of the halo universe and stuff that's, that's going yeah. on there and i know that like let's say the forerunners had crazy ass mechs too essentially um and the covenant never did anything like that but um i, I like that the halo universe isn't about that and it's not going that way Colossus is kind of here, and I don't think it. I don't think it's something we'll ever see again. To be honest, I, never, I didn't get that feel off it. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's more variety on on the units. Like I, I would think that something more. Yeah, either flying or something on wheels, because this thing could. I mean, you could tip it over pretty easily, probably. But and I don't know. Um, I I think it looks kind of kind of cool. I'm 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 okay with the, the Gundam type stuff personally. I, I've never got gotten really into it, but. Um, it does definitely. That's a good call out. It does gives you vibes of that. This is part of the Johnson's um, leader army, so he's all about the mech stuff. So that's probably why he has that that mech suit. So, um, and I, I don't play much of the multiplayer stuff, but I would imagine you can have him out there with mantises, and then um, also this big bad boy, this big colossus. So that could be that could be fun seeing those things walk around. All right. So we then go, we go set up one of the, one of our firebase locations, we call down the Colossus, we take the Colossus up to that spot that we just shot out, and then um, now that little orb is in the ground, then you use the Colossus to stomp on it, and stomping on it is what essentially disables that charging station once and for all. So the, the crux of the mission from here is just going around the, the map and and disabling the three other locations that are around. And of course, there's quite a bit of resistance along the way. Krista, do you want to walk us through 
your approach on this? Everything. After you finally get this bad boy? Of course. I would love to. <laughs> All right. So. I mean, is it terrible on Legendary? No, it's really not. Oh, it's not? Okay. No. Um, so my initial goal was to get my base up to level three as quick as physically possible. Yeah. It doesn't. It starts at level one or just like It doesn't even start. I think version. you need like to upgrade it three times. No, maybe just yeah. two times. It's like a well, thousand. Well, you can't build a garage right away. Yeah. It's like 2,500 uh, lightning bolts. So mm -hmm. I actually did not go and bring the mech and take out that first uh point initially oh you didn't no oh, okay because you get what 14 minutes every time or 10 minutes every time 10 additional minutes you start so yeah i didn't mention there's a timer so that's the countdown 15 minutes to start and then each time i think yeah i think it adds 10 minutes so you do have a decent amount of time once you get that additional one yeah so what i did was i instead of going over there and hitting that i and i just started building up my base so i started off with i think three fully upgraded um generators and two oh, supply yeah. pads mm -hmm. and i just let those run and i upgraded <laughs> <Right>. my base <laughs> twice i upgraded my base twice i upgraded the garage and the air units to max mm -hmm. and then i upgraded all of my armory to max Oh, before you did anything. Before I did anything, yeah. Wow. I think I think so, halfway through that, I had to go and bring the mech over there and kill the first point, but that it wasn't a big deal, because then I got another did you 10 get, minutes. Did you get the power nodes that are nearby? Because there's a couple yeah. down below in this area. Yeah, I got all of... I, had, I think I had two power nodes going as well, because okay, there was nice. one left of the point, and then one right below the base. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's one more down there, so there's three kind of on the bottom of the map. Yeah. Yeah, um, so I had those going. So I upgraded everything, and then I started turning out mantises, mm -hmm. um, hornets, and vultures, and nightingales. Oh, okay. So nothing rolling, no scorpions or anything. Nope, 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 nope. Okay. And then after I had built up quite a, quite a nice force, I moved up to the next point. So the next point I went for, I went for the the right base. Okay. Yeah, I went for the right base, and then I went for the closest node, which was to the right, which had the base on it. Mm -hmm. So I took out the controller sentinel, and then I said, I don't ha actually have to kill the controller sentinel. So I just went to the point. Um, so what do you mean you took it out? Uh, I took it, I captured the point from, from the controller sentinel. Oh, so you just like released it from its tether? Yeah, and then I just let it... Let yeah. it live, live its life Let's in peace. Float around. Yeah, I let it live its life in peace after being pantsed. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, that's nice of you. Yeah. Because you could have killed it, but no, you decided not to. No, I'm, I'm a very kind god. You are. Oh, wow. And then I went straight. I ignored the base initially, and I went straight for the point because I was running out. I, I started doing this process at four minutes till. Oh, jeez. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I totally ignored the base and went right up there, smashed the point, and then I took out the base, took that over, put down, like, only supply pads, because I was really uh, needing supplies at that point. Mm -hmm. And then I went on with my life, and I started going to the base to the left, or the point to the left of my base. So I started kind okay. of m shimmying my units over there. <laughs> Um, but you're just, you're just kind of going all as one blob, right? You're not splitting pretty anything Pretty much. I keep a couple units at the base because every once in a while a huge army will come and attack one of my bases. Um, so I try to make sure I have yeah. like a vulture or something there. And then, of course, once I see the attacks coming, I uh, I start building units at the base to defend it. If I have any extra, um, extra availability. Yeah. They sent them... Uh, against me quite a bit they did like, yeah just, with like, like a bunch of race and locusts and just annoying tons of locust, yeah. <laughs> yeah really annoying so at that point there's this there's another base up at that top point that i was talking about so the one on the left took the left one there's a base there took that base at that point my initial base was getting pretty fucked and i'm just like you know what i'm just gonna i'm just gonna leave it i don't care oh really yeah i just let it die so I still had my secondary <laughs> base at that first point, and then I yeah. had my other base up towards the top, and then I went and captured- Is that the cloaked one? The one that's, like, invisible right away? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 
That's kind of cool. You know, they have a little cloaking technology. Cloaking. So you can't see it. You guys have stuff shooting at you. And then once you get up there close enough, then it reveals itself. It's like, all right, now I have to fuck it with, like, eight vultures. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, at some point, I, I gave up on the mantises and just had a bunch of vultures and hornets and nightingales. So that was fun. Yeah. And um, then your ODSTs, right? Or did you let them die somewhere no 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 i still had them because they had to capture the points and like yeah. turn on terminals that's the only reason i kept them around <laughs> i would have abandoned them if not but i needed i needed some boots on the ground their emp is pretty slick too we talked about the that. emp is pretty slick i do enjoy the emp it's fun um so then i went and captured the final point i went to the middle um cleared everything out and then uh, Colony showed up, and unfortunately for Colony and the Goliaths, my entire force was in the air, and there was nothing they could do. So could they not even shoot at you? I think Colony can shoot at you, but the Goliaths cannot. They just run around. Yeah, they just run around. So, so it was funny. it was very easy, <laughs> and that's yeah. how I did it on Legendary. Nice Thanks for work. coming to my TED talk. <laughs> the uh, it's interesting because, so a little bit more about that fight. I guess, uh, David, do you want to chime in before we talk more about that fight? About I didn't, your approach? Yeah, I, I didn't do a whole much difference. I was kind of pushed for time, so that's why I used the transport to kind of zip uh, once or twice around. Nice. But for the most part, I did try, like, I saw a video of like doing a mantis army and stuff last time. It's like, okay, I'll get some mantises in and use that. Yeah. Because that leader power is OP. So I was using that. Uh, I played on normal, so it wasn't too difficult either. But uh, I remembered what Krista had said about, like, Colossus and stuff being, like, can't do air from the last mission. So I was like, okay, yeah, I'll get some air stuff in there. And that's pretty handy. I mean, the, the last boss fight isn't too bad when he starts teleporting around and stuff. But, um, yeah, I didn't. It, it, so, it, like, it was a cool. combo of Mantis and some A little bit of stuff. It, yeah, I, I didn't, um, I didn't do DVA too, 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 too differently. But it, did you take out the controller units or did you avoid no, them I, as well? I kind of just went for speed. Yeah. I was just like, just do this. Get yeah. Yeah, I feel okay. like this mission, I, I want to say my one of my times, I played it a couple times. I didn't play it in Heroic because did, that didn't sound like much fun to me. But um, the t time that I got, the best time, it was like 36 minutes or something like that. You can, I think you can take this mission down pretty quickly. Especially if you do the transports, I would imagine, not like walk your mechs around the entire place. Um but yeah, it's not too bad once you get your army built up. But there's really no point. Um, did you split your units at all, David? I feel like it's like there's no per point because like there, you meet a ton of resistance um, when you get to the actual, you know, the charging stations. So might as well just send everybody. I'm not great at multitasking in these games, so I, I, yeah. I'm a I'm big blob kind of guy. Mm -hmm. Bring them all. You're blobby. I'm blobby. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to think if I did anything very different. Um, no, for the most part, it was just, it It took me a while. Well, it didn't take me a while, but like it, it was frustrating to realize that you had to turtle right away because I, I wanted to explore a little bit, but I'd explore, you know, I, I'd have to build up this base because it, it was, it's so basic right away. And so you're like, oh crap, this is going to take for, forever. Um, so I did do a little exploring and, and found those uh, power nodes. But once I like, saw too much banished you know like i was just running around with sunray my little hero unit um and they once they met resistance i was like oh see ya i gotta go back to the base go back to my boys i feel like this mission actually would have been a good one to use a jackrabbit to do a little exploring because you can build that right away what's the jackrabbit call <laughs> well let me tell you about the jackrabbit it's this little thing oh speaking of where the warthogs go Eh, who cares? They're gone, aren't they? There's no warthogs. Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> Jackrabbits have replaced warthogs. Oh man, what a world. What if what if there was no warthogs in Halo ever? It was just a jackrabbit. No! That hell does not exist, Colin. <laughs> Colin, if that universe exists, I want you playing the Maw from Halo 1 With on loop forever. Yeah, you deserve it. <laughs> Can you imagine though, like if there was no, no iconic warthog? I bet that thing oh. handles janky as hell. Oh man, maybe we'll find out. No. In Halo Infinite. Please no. <laughs> oh boy. Um. Yeah. So let's talk about this colony fight. Um. 
I, I think I did mention like in the middle, so you do have to clear out all the stuff in the middle. That is one of the objectives. And then you also have to clear out like the ship supplies. Um, I didn't get a good view on like that. That objective just kind of happened for me. So I don't know if you guys got a good look at what that is, but so at some point you just destroy those ship supplies and then Colony shows up. He does taunt you at one point. I don't know if you guys picked up on that, but he, what is this one line? I wrote it down here. Um, I'm Colony Burr. Yeah, it says we are one. Where is it? Oh shoot, I wrote it down. It's like destroy <laughs> more or less. Um, he's, yeah, oh, there it is. He pops out. Oh yeah, when he pops out of the portal. He says, as one, end them. That's it. He's a weirdo. He is a weirdo. So he teleports in with this little red teleporty thing, and then you take out his shield and hurt him a little bit, and then he teleports away, and then a bunch of Goliaths show up and some other banished, and all these Goliaths are somehow shielding him. So you need to take out the Goliaths to actually do any damage on, on, on Colony. Um, you do that twice and then you can finally take him down so yeah i don't know krista what did you think about this little boss battle at the end i thought it was really interesting you did yeah yeah i liked it a lot you know even though i was it was kind of easy i think the teleporting was fun i think the shielding was fun it's definitely probably a lot more fun when you have a better plethora of units so he's actually a threat but yeah i like colony i think he's a great character i like how he only called in other hunter units i thought that was cool yeah that's cool um mm -hmm. i liked the diversity uh i liked them using more um let golo in this game so i i don't really have any complaints i thought it was fun well the interesting thing even though colony's dead like canon wise <clears throat> Technically, we could meet another colony at some point, right? Like the the Legolo could form another colony. Maybe it doesn't have the same personality. Oh, well, there's there, there's got to be more Legolo characters in the universe. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it can't just. So I mean, it could be. They could very easily create another one. Give it a, give it a different name. Yeah. What did you think about the fight, David? Did you enjoy it? Was it, a, it was okay. Uh, I'm typically not a big fan of teleporting bosses and. Yeah. The, the teleportation is it's grand. It's not as egregious in, in this game. Uh, and I think Prometheans are way, way worse than, yeah. than this guy. But um, no, it was a cool fight, actually. It was, um, I think Colony was could have been built and done a bit better. I know he only existed for like two missions and barely even in, in either of them, really. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like there could have been more to Spare Breaker, to be honest, to kind of make him a, more, a bigger, kind of more interesting antagonist. Speaking but, of um, bigger, like he's kind of the same size as the Goliath. Would it have made him more intimidating? Like, could they have made him bigger and more intimidating, or maybe um, like with six legs or something? You you think you want him physically bigger? Yeah, more like kind of scarab kind of. Yeah, maybe not that size, but maybe more like a I don't know. Like two two Goliaths, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Just two something Goliaths. a little bit more. <laughs> I'm sure he's more efficient than the Goliaths, but he kind of looked similar, at least from you know from the standpoint of RTS third person above. Well, view. I think something we have to remember is that because he's another considered another leader in Atriox's army, he has to kind of look Scale. normal. Yeah. yeah, he he has to yeah. be able to get into ships and meetings and what it, I don't I don't know what they do. <laughs> meetings. I mean, they have to have like war meetings or something, right? Like telling you what to do. I mean, he I feel like at some point he would have to enter a building to do something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, didn't right. they also like, like desk remember? <laughs> yeah, he's he's got to he's got to do his paperwork, you know, the the banished paperwork. But also like remember that. Let Golo aren't really accepted as leaders as well, so he might have had to make himself a little bit non-threatening in order for him to keep his position or something like that. I mean, hmm. that's, that's interesting it, because it's yeah. like a it's a combined personality of a bunch of little Let Golo. So the fact that he's a a being is just interesting to begin with. Like he has a consciousness, but he's a consciousness of a bunch of worms. I, I like it. Mm. I want to see more Let Golo. I think yeah. Let Golo has have always been super super cool. So the more we mm -hmm. see, the better. Yeah, and like they tried to do some Let Golo stuff in Nightfall, but it wasn't super interesting. 
Um, no. It was more like a horror element of that. Uh, yeah, show. it was. I, I I think it might have been because Nightfall itself had a bit of a pacing issue that it kind of like Ola weren't as impactful, I guess, because mm-hmm. the entire entirety of the show was not very impactful. Yeah. Sorry, Dave. I keep interrupting you. Yeah, it's okay. I can't remember what I was saying anyway. But uh, yeah, Colony <laughs> fight, cool, do it. Yeah. Well, yeah, you got to complete the mission. And then, um, yeah, so you take him out. And then, I don't know I don't know if I really like the end, this end little gameplay thing. It's a little weird. So you have hornets fly over and chuck a bunch of charges into the hole, which we've seen charges from, which I'm forgetting what unit has the charges. Is it like the, the mech or the combat unit? All these teams have one. They have them too? I'm pretty sure ODST have the charges. Or the so wounds. they have little charges that they chuck and then they shoot them? Oh, yeah. I think you're right. It is ODSTs. So they drop those charges down in there, shoot that. Or I guess Quinn hits the button to, like, lower the ship. She, like, smacks it. And then the ship lowers and then it blows up. And then everybody's, you know, happy. And then <laughs> uh, high-fiving each other. And then I guess it does. It is interesting that they mentioned that this location, because they they must not have been aware of this location, because it was it was cloaked, so they they couldn't really, expl- or I guess the banished were exploiting it. So now that they they've removed the banished from that area, then they mentioned that hey, Isabel can probably find some cool stuff here, and we can use it. The UNSC can use it to our advantage. And then they end it from there. So I, I want to roll this into the, our recap, because we're not doing a separate recap show for this one. But what do you guys think about this little story that they've told in Operation Spearbreaker? So it, just, it took a day. They were researching. You know, they, they found out the Banished were up to no good. And then, you know, as a part of the initial mi- meeting or the initial mission, we kind of find out exactly what they're trying to do, or more or less ex- exactly what they're trying to do, and then the second mission is them stopping, stopping the Banish from their plan of using this ship. David, what do you think about this, the plot? Was there enough of it? Was it interesting? Did it move things forward enough for you? Two missions is not a lot, and to be honest, to tell like a completely separate side story, uh, I think I, kind of what I said before in them. Um, the previous episode like I wish the scale was smaller I wish it wasn't about base building I wish it was about the unit I wish it was more character building Sunray I think have more potential than was shown in, and the same as Connolly has more potential mm-hmm. than what was shown in these two missions that essentially boiled down to a few extra units but the same style of gameplay that the rest of the game had so um, I mean it's not bad but it, it didn't, didn't blow me away and I, I remember being particularly excited about an ODSD squad that you yeah. were playing as and that has potential, but again, I know it's an RTS, and maybe I'm being a bit harsh on on that. But that that's kind of where where I'm coming from. Yeah, I, like I hate to say, it, but it's it's pretty forgettable. Yeah. Um, and like the next DLC, I think is more memorable. I, I like what they were trying to accomplish here, and they were because the big question at the end of the main campaign was like, well, what's Spirit of Fire gonna do now, or what are the Banish gonna do now? There's a big question mark there, so. I feel like they tell this story and they answer some of those questions. They say, well, kind of what we were projecting during during the end of when we were talking about the end of that campaign. is like, well, Vanish is probably going to try to get off the, the arc now. Um, that makes sense. And so they're they're telling that story like, yes, the ba- that's exactly what the Vanish are doing. Um, and the Vanish are pissed off at the UNSC, so they're going to try to, to shoot the Spirit of Fire out of the, out of the sky. I don't know if... Maybe it was because it didn't include a cutscene, or like these little gameplay cuts, just didn't quite capture the crux of the mission effectively. I don't know, Krista. Any any thoughts on these two? I I definitely think that the next DLC completely overshadows this DLC, like yeah, in a bad way. Like the, these two missions are very very forgettable once you kind of move on mm-hmm. to the latter half of the game. Mm-hmm. I think they did a good job at um, kind of tidying us over for Awakening the Nightmare. Because these yeah. were kind of in between. It came out as a little DLC. It kept us engaged with the game so that we were still 
in the system when Awakening the Nightmare came o- came along. Mm-hmm. I think that was the whole purpose of this. Like, let's give them a little something to do so that they're still interested in Halo Wars so that when our big DLC comes out, they're still going to be, um, you know, interested in it. Well, I think the point, you know, as I think about this more, the point of this DLC, because it was part of the season pass, right? This DLC was really to give us the new leaders for multiplayer. Um, I think that was the bigger part of the package. Again, none of us are, are real big on that, so we um, we don't have a ton of insight on how that impacted the multiplayer side of things. But from a campaign standpoint, it's like I guess I'm glad they gave us a little nugget of story, but I you know I'm also wishing that I had had more from this. Um, I could see. I guess another thing that I would love to get is maybe instead of just two missions that tell a story, maybe give us, you know, another couple side stories, right? Like give us, I would love to have, you know, two more missions that are telling a, a side story of something, you know, the UNSC is trying to accomplish on the Ark and the Banish trying to stop them or something else. I don't know, David, do you think it would be like, is, have they worn out the Halo Wars 2 storytelling with Operation Spearbreaker? Or they, would you be more interested in in, have, in them telling like, more stories? Like now? Well, I mean, at this point, you know, it's been a few years, right? You know, yeah. as, a, as of recording. But w- do you think that that would have been sustainable for Halo Wars 2 to say, like, okay, we're going to actually come out with four new s- side stories for you to explore? That would have been cool. And definitely that seems like what their DLC was doing in terms of, like, the main story of Halo Wars 2 ended on, like, not say a cliffhanger, but a setup, right? Of, like, okay, Anders has gone over there, she's gonna link up with the main Halo universe, but we have what's happening on the arcs, and then we have human forces, Spirit of Fire have an advantage, but you have Atriox with his overwhelming amount of numbers, and, you know, still very much a potent force on, on the arc. Mm-hmm. There's loads, loads of potential for storytelling for, like, the size of the arc, the, the shit that could possibly happen all around it. That maybe is what they were trying to go for. But, like, it's very inconsistent when you compare Spare Breaker to Awaken the Nightmare. Mm-hmm. And I think, like Krista said, it totally overshadows it. Uh, I would, I'm still I'm open to it. I think, you know, I, I want another Halo Wars 3. Hell yeah. I mean, I'll, I'd be down with that. But um, I think you definitely could have done more something like a Spartan Ops for this game and brought out smaller things, smaller missions. Mm-hmm. I definitely would have been down with that. And especially because, like, the theater of operations that, you know, the potential there, all the different environments on the arc, come on, there's loads you could have done. Yeah. Um, and I guess it makes sense that there would be some kind of ship building or ship dock on the arc. That makes total sense. And yes, you would initiate some kind of operation there. And I, I like to think that, like, foreigner ships are crazy, right? So, like, say they may not have been able to actually get on this ship to as a tra- mode of transport. Mm-hmm. So they were probably just saying, what can we do? Oh, we can turn it on and point it. Okay, grand. It's now just a missile that we just aim yeah. and shoot. Mm-hmm. And, do you know what I mean? That, I think all of that could have been fleshed out over a couple of missions. And well, that would have been cool. Imagine being like an ODST doing go on behind enemy lines for like data gathering and trying to figure out. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah, this thing is totally shielded. What do we do? We send in an ODST to figure out what the fuck's on the other side of the shield. Mm-hmm. Or, and then they just have to like operate guerrilla style tactics. Maybe figure out what they're trying to do. Oh shit, they're trying to do this. Quinn, what can you do? I can hack shit. Great. Let's go hack this thing and do it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you could have done more. It would have um, been cool. So I like that direction. It would have been cool. So mm-hmm. if you're deployed as an ODST squad, you're kind of going stealth um, guerrilla st- style. And then at some point during the mission, like maybe you're, you accomplish a bunch of objectives, you're 20, 25 minutes into the mission, and then all of a sudden you meet up with Alice and, and Jerome, and then all of a sudden they're a part of your squad to finish the rest of the, the, the mission, right? Like that would be kind of cool. Yeah, imagine if they were like, they're like the heavies you call in. Mm-hmm. That like, you're scouting out, you're getting the information, you're in all these T-Squad, realistically, what are you, what can you achieve? Yeah. And so it's like, shit, okay, we have Conley, we have a fucking crazy amount of Legolo, we gotta call in some Spartans to fuck these guys up. That would've been cool. Yeah, I like that. 
Um, let's talk about the, I guess, what was introduced here. So we talked about the story. Um, the units themselves, um, I don't know, there's not a whole lot of units. I don't, Krista, anything to say about the Mantis, getting that in Halo Wars 2 finally, or uh, any other, other units that we get? Um, the new leader powers are pretty cool, especially like the Grizzly Drop yeah. and stuff like that. let's talk about those. I, mm -hmm. I really liked that. Um, the Scatter Bombs are pretty much the same, it's the same shit, like, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, the other leader powers I really didn't use, but the Grizzly was a big standout for me. Um, the Mantises don't do anything that spectacular. The only reason to do the Mantises is to use the leader power that makes them invulnerable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, those... I, I thought they were okay. Yeah. They were decent. I but... mean, do using the leader power and They're using Mantises are is, is a very powerful combo. It's It, it works yeah. very well. It's great. Um, if that is if that's what you want your strategy strategy to be, it's fantastic. It's really mm -hmm. cool. On their own, eh, but once they added that leader power, they're actually very useful. Um, the Colossus is just just a trope for that one mission, really. It doesn't really do anything else. Yeah. Um, I liked fighting all the Sentinels, though. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It, it made sense, I think, within the the lore. Um, with you know, the arcs fighting back. The arc doesn't want anyone anyone messing with it. And I thought both the, of the boss battles were good at the end of both missions. Yeah, yeah. I mean, boss battles are, are a weird thing in RTS, but I feel like they're also you need some sort of a culmination, something to throw everything at. I, yeah, I find for me this boss battle was just like I have a, I have my wad of 120 units. I just I'm just gonna throw them at <laughs> throw my colony. Um, you know, I did have to move them around a little bit to to get the Goliaths first, but I, oh, I was able to get the drop. So I had I had my full army against Colony. I should have mentioned this before. And then he, the, he somebody hit me really hard. All of a sudden, I, <laughs> I lost a bunch. Either like some of my units, my like my Nightingales were overworked and they got shot down. And then all of a sudden, my other units weren't doing so hot. But I did reach a point where, because the, the Grizzlies are 30 units. I was like, oh, okay, now I all of a sudden have 70 units. Time to call in the Grizzlies. And was able to drop them in, and they just finished the job for me, which was pretty slick. Um, yeah, so we're kind of at the same spot, though, which is interesting to think about. So we did, it, we did, did get this additional story, but from a universe standpoint, Halo Wars 2 universe standpoint, we're, we're still at a standstill. We're still at this point where... The Banister's still stuck on the Ark, and the Spirit of Fire is still keeping an eye on it. Yeah. Anything else to say? Well, we can do some Phoenix logs here, but David, do you have anything else to add before we cover off on uh, that stuff from like a recap standpoint? Uh, from a recap standpoint, I think the leader powers are pretty much the highlight of of these two missions. I think they're pretty. The additions are are pretty fun, and I think that stands to like just being a fun thing to do. Yeah. They introduced to the game. I like them a lot. To bring in, just bringing down three grizzlies is mental. And like the way that the <laughs> animation that they come in and it's just like it's it's just so cool. It's just such a cool yeah. thing to do. Um so I really enjoyed that. Um other than that I I pretty much said my piece. Okay. Cool. Let's cover off on these Phoenix logs. There are two of them. Um the first one was near the power node on the left of the map. And then actually I think I feel like mine was maybe the might have been the right, not the left. I might have got mixed up there. But anyway, it's one of the power nodes from that is by where the controller sentinels is circling around. When you get rid of that, there's one that's right there. And then um, by destroying the banished base at the top of the map, that's the, I believe that's the one that's invisible, cloaked. Um, once you destroy that, there will be another phoenix log that pops up. Krista, what do they have to say? All right, so the first one is called Float Slow But Steady. From the journal of Val Taram, Sanghili Guard and Translator. I was overseeing a group of Hergox when I heard a shrieking of metal, an almost animalistic cry that pulled at my gut as the sentinels tore the enduring conviction apart. I would have given mm. anything to be with my clan brothers then. To die a warrior's death among my brethren. Instead, I watched helpless as the sentinels carved up my ship, my home, and family. Whoa. The shame I felt drove me to madness. It has been weeks since I even unsheathed my blade. They told me 
my skills as an interpreter were more important than my swordsmanship. When we left the Covenant to join Atriox, we lost access to all logistics and docking support. No more repair crews, just a few Huragoks we happened to have on board when the Shipmaster pledged allegiance to the Banished. My ability to communicate with the Huragoks, the sign language and the patience it required to learn it, quickly isolated me from my own kind. When my brothers fought in battle, I was to work with the Horogoks to secure resources and unlock ancient technology. How I wish we had an Ungoy deacon that could have taken my place. I felt less than a warrior. I felt less than a warrior, yeah. Now, at last, I feel the vengeance and redemption is within my reach, and the instrument is the very thing that has separated me from my warrior brethren. Atriox has charged the mysterious Lek Golo, known as Colony, to seek out Forerunner weapons, and it has found a long-forgotten ship. I have been assigned to communicate and to watch over the Huragox, which goes by the name of Float Slow But Steady. Because of its habits of almost skimming the ground as it works, within the span of a day, I started talking to the ship and launching systems that hold it. I consider myself fluent, but there are occasional words that I cannot accurately translate. The closest translations seem to be bloom, grow, or seed. The Jirohane looked at me with disgust as I work with Float Slow, as they fear that what they do not understand. But they cannot hide their awe at the results. The ship seems to grow and rebuild itself from the very launch system, and a spear to drive deep into the hearts of our enemies. Ooh, he... there! I finally got Spearbreaker. Yay! <laughs> that was it. I I just needed him to tell me they were going to use the ship as a spear. There you go. Perfect. We get it now. <laughs> I understand. That's a cool little journal entry. So Va his name's Val Telram. Val that Telram. is actually pretty cool. Mm -hmm. He's a so cool he's like a boy. super smart Sanghealy. Love it. All right. The next one is a tensed bolt. Unknown author, installation 00, date 29,823 BC. Uh, so this one, it wasn't, 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 you know, yesterday or tomorrow. It was, it was just a little mm -hmm. bit back, you know. Just a couple days just ago. Just a couple days ago. It disturbs me to admit, but I always feel a wash of Inui after, Inui, Inui, after dismantling one of the librarian seed ships. As with all of my master's design, architecture and functional balance in perfect harmony. It seems such a pity to be put back in the box. It is as if mighty archers have flexed their muscles, drawn back the box to full strength, and then suddenly frozen in full pose. The tension remains, the action and all potential postponed, perhaps never to be realized. The temptation to launch it and to break the stasis is strong. So I must busy myself with other tasks. However, even refu Refugia has some buried in buried inert marvel of technology. Weapons, ships, power sources, all patiently waiting to be put to use once again. This is the way of things. At least the ship in, in the sympathy with the installation. As with all the librarian's plans, Installation 00 has perform performed admirably, but now it lays dormant, sleeping. And it is my task to watch and maintain this installation should the threat arise once again. This guy talks real funny. <laughs> God damn it, the monitors are ruining my day. Yeah, so this is... Um, tragic solitude, it tragic sounds solitude like. Tragic solitude again, yeah. yeah. And so he shut down, it's probably talking about the ship that they were going to use that the banish are going to use yeah so he shut this he was shutting this thing down for whatever reason way back in the day um interesting cool let's talk about should we do any trivia david trivia there's nothing really i <laughs> <No>. mean <laughs> no i mean no to be honest, to talk david about. refuses to tell us trivia <laughs> okay. I could make something up, but no, does not, does not really. Nothing really good. All right. No. I mean, the trivia is kind of in those Phoenix logs. I feel like, I think that's good stuff. Good deep lore. All right, let's do community then, and we'll get out of here. Hey. What's Facebook? L say? Oh, community. So here we go. You are Colin Perkins. Mm -hmm. Halo. 
podcast as well. I've been September 25th at 4 18 p.m. You're a Legolo trainer and you're preparing your worm buddies for the performance of a lifetime. What shape do they take in the grand finale? Very nice, Colin. Question your mission D. <laughs> Repay the words too. Not on my watch mission. Colin's a nice little gift there. It's a pretty cool gift of just like the hunters rising from guardians. It's pretty cool. Yeah. They just like self assemble themselves. It's pretty cool. Lucas says Hollywood superstar Shia LaBeouf for the legendary fight with the actual cannibal Shia LaBeouf. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Richard says my Legolo would take the form of Bailey's Irish cream creamy soft creamy delicious okay. mm. <laughs> Manny says time to get swifty to save the planet very nice uh, Colin says we're recording this afternoon you still want to chime in that's not a correct answer Colin didn't even answer his question God damn it. And then we have Manny says a performance that took a thousand lifetimes to perfect it only comes down to an epic dance formation that only Master Chief as Mega Loco can perform and it's a Halo Bollywood movie trailer thing. There we go. Mm, nice. Thank you, guys. Yeah, absolutely. What does this? I bet you Discord is fun with this, huh? <laughs> Matt says, oh, no. <laughs> he says, uh, mine would take the shape of a Spartan 2. Known thy enemy. Pope says, a giant banana. <laughs> nice. Nate says, going off Matt's idea, four separate forms, each a member of blue team. Mm. Rebecca says, boobs. <laughs> Just boobs. Just boobs. Cal says a recreation of New York City. <laughs> um, Prophet of Deer says the Aristocats. Yeah. Disney movie. Is it Aristocrats or Aristocats? Uh, it says Kratz, but I think it says the, the Aristocrats. Aristocrats. Yeah, it's a it's an old joke. It's it's a silly thing, but anyway. I want good. it to be the Disney movie where it's just the. <laughs> The Aristocats. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Um, Blue Calc says thanks. Now I can only imagine a, a hunter speaking like Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> uh, Jedi Spartan says a Legolo equivalent to Venom from Marvel. Barlet nice. King says a big nose. <laughs> <laughs> um, FBI says Godzilla. Or maybe Jaws. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what else we got? Uh, I think that's it. I think that's what we got. So, thank you. I like a big nose. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, absolutely. Thank you for chiming in, everyone. Krista, so after the show, Google the aristocrats joke. Okay. And there's lots of different people telling this stupid joke. So, anyway... I will do Check my that research. Out. That will do it for our debriefing of the Not On My Watch mission from Halo Wars 2. And we have, we're have we done with Operation Spirit Breaker. Woo! On to Awakening the Nightmare. <laughs> On the next episode, we'll be playing What Could Go Wrong. <laughs> Send us your thoughts at podcastevolved.gmail.com or drop us a tweet at Podcast Evolved on Twitter. You can also support the show by visiting Podcast Evolved on Patreon. And don't forget that free audiobook trial. Visit audibletrial.com slash podcast evolved until next time evolve evolve evolved, evolved. evolved.